fellows who meet in a boxing um, club when they were teenagers, and they're sitting in a sports car in this scene and watching boxing on TV, and realizing that their emotional difficulties have adversely affected their adult lives. Enjoy. You're right! Use your right, man! Jab, jab, jab. Is that all he's got? When's he going to hit him? I don't know why I bother with boxing anymore. Nowadays, watching matches like watching gerbil scrubble. I have been doing live match in years. They're all dinner cards now. Feed and bleed. You know, the firm buys a table, writes it off as an expense. Half of the executives, half the clients, that's how I go. <laughs> I mean, it's how I used to go. The Germans run at the firm now. They're not buying any tickets, and uh, these days I wouldn't get any even if they did. McAllister, remember him? That kid from school, he's been on the boxing club. He was a big fan. Going out in the club, actually, I'm going towards sports reporting. I used to get tickets from him when he was in the paper. He, he went to Carlton for journalism. First, he spent a few years here on the sports desk reporting for the Clarion. He covered all the events. Promoters would show back in fiscal with free tickets, and he handled all the old pals. After he went to Carlton, I didn't feel like paying to attend matches. I haven't heard of Mac in years. I don't know what's going on. He went into, uh, yeah, he went into political reporting, then he moved on to uh, <laughs> public. Uh, relations for politicians. And then he got the order, yes! Now he's got him! Get him a sucker! Off him! That's not a knockdown, he slips! Oh, punch. It's garbage, you don't count a man out on a slip! Nobody! Slip! Out! He get up right away, he didn't get up. Come on, Trent, watch the fight, so what's happening in the ring? He took a hook right below the ribs. Ah, uh, I guess that's shot. He can't be out of shape though, going down from hitting the ribs. Anyway, five, six years ago, McAllister got the Order of Canada. He called him a respected political prognosticator. Well, it's better than getting an MBA and then being inducted into the loyal order of the boot. <laughs> a couple weeks ago, we were having lunch. You said you moved off site away from head office. Yeah, it's a big uh, setup a management consulting firm is running. They uh, rent space for, uh, you know, the firms for use by their district executives. Uh, a guy gets an office as part of his uh, you know, termination package, six months a year. It's a turnkey operation, no receptionist, computer, furniture, nice carpets. It lets you feel like you're still somebody, you know, <laughs> while you're out looking for a new job. At one minute and 48 seconds of the third round, the winner by knockout, Jerome! All right. The next bout is another four-rounder. Newer guy has good records at all. So, wait, you've been given the golden handshake. <laughs> no, no, not as yet. Um, I'm still on the payroll for now. Uh, when the Bruce Fence people took over the firm, <laughs> the head German called me in for a chat. He said, well, Freddy, his name's Freddy. He actually likes to be called Freddy, but his name's Friedrich. He likes to be called Freddy. He told me <laughs> that they're setting up an interim structure putting all the prime candidates to stay on in charge. And while their performance is being assessed, I'm one of five guys who's been shipped out to this detached office. That's that executive graveyard I was telling you about. He's the vulture, doesn't it? Oh, there's the kicker. Freddie showed me this file that the former CEO had been working on. Working on a case to fire me. First I heard of it, eh? <laughs> I'm supposed to be pretty. Uh, hard to work with. Don't take direction well. Won't accept criticism. And I'm insensitive to subordinates. <laughs> all these instances recorded were all things I thought reflected my being firm, assertive, sure of myself. Good stuff like that. Maybe the Germans would just assume I'd bail out, though. Because if the guys in the first round don't work out, they've kept guys they can fall back on. Maybe they'd look at giving me a chance. Despite that file? Well, Freddy's a takeover specialist. He said they never take files like that as gospel. Well, that's the only information I've been able to get, though. But it was like when I was waiting to get the can back at Mowbray. You know, I'd phone in the main office to get the scoop, and whoever I talked to was not there, don't know nothing, or can't get off the phone fast enough, right? Eh? Uh, pariah and untouchable. One of the walking dead. <coughs> I've seen it happen in my life before. Now, here's the first guy. Blue corner. Jeez, he's tiny. He's featherweights. Fast, but the punches don't pack the elephant to heavies. Anyhow, the situation. It's getting on my nerves. It's 
It's like everything's going into the ditch, you know. Story of my life that, you know. Okay, I graduated from college with a petroleum engineering degree. Got a job in the oil patch just the way I planned. Oh, I discover I don't enjoy working in the petrochem industry. It's not like the ticket, that's not like the picture I picked up from Dan. It's a lot tighter control now, you know, the, the old freewheeling thing in the past. Okay, I hear an MBA is the way to go. So I pull out a petrochem, every tool. After I graduated though, Moby took me on, you know, things went well for a little while. Got a couple of promotions. And I don't know, it's like it's like something inside me was trying to sabotage myself. You know, I started stepping on big toes. <laughs> I knew it. But I kept telling myself, this is the way to go. Play hardball the way the biggies do. Only well, it wasn't. And I got the can. Which essentially is what's happening at my present job. Me screwing up and not knowing it. <laughs> the irony. The screw fence take over may be an opportunity for me to hang in. Ah, that's the point though. Let's screw that up too. That's the big deal. So you're already facing the job. <sighs> Another problem noted was uh, I tend to go through periods. Not often, but you know, <laughs> unfortunately very well documented. Where these, these uh, periods tend to perceive me seeing a shrink. And download the psychopharmaceutical cocktail just to bring me around, you know. The pills, they're in the past for me, you know. I won't use them again unless I absolutely have to. I write out the borderline depressions. You know the pills? They get you down to you know, the 10 yard line, you know? They don't get you over the goal, though. You know? And in the red corner, there's your crowd favorite. Ah, I know his manager slightly. Real slime ball. Big promises to his fighter, never delivers. <laughs> the other guy, he's from out of town. Anyhow, there's something else. I'm getting dreams, flashbacks, bad dreams, nightmares. It's hard to figure out what dreams mean. These flashbacks, though, do you actually have, like, hallucinations? No, no, no. They're just like a picture in my mind. Like, when you deliberately visualize a uh, memory, an imaginary scene, only with me it pops in without me even trying, you know? It pops in suddenly. It only lasts for a moment or two. The dreams are longer. <coughs> Mostly, the flashbacks are just small stuff. You know, like seeing the father's toolkit in the end cabinet of the kitchen table. Others, they're heavy duty. Like, I'm laying in my old bed. My bedroom door's open, and I can see the kitchen door across the hall opposite. I can see the light coming underneath the door. I can hear my mother and father yelling at one another. These guys must have lost their stuff. They're afraid to mix it. Exactly. <laughs> they don't believe the drink very hard at all. Uh, they have me training hard. What brings this stuff on? That's it, I don't know. Must be something though triggering them without my being aware of what. Nothing I can ever spot. Another thing that's coming on is uh, something new. It's called linkages. You know, suddenly something pops into my mind. That shorter guy that reminds you of somebody who's so trouble with the same build, the same kind of face. The boxer? No, way. Climb the ring, he went in the back. Not a boxer, a school bully. Sorry, what you were saying? Yeah, where suddenly I realize the significance of something in my past, you know? It's not a recall. It's always something I remember. Just now I understand what it was all about. You were saying, bullies, did you uh, get a lot of that in school? As far back as I can remember, long before I started school. For some guys it was their movie entertainment, being the snot out of me. Why? What brought that on? Why you? Search me. I think it's just what they do. Try out guys until they find an easy target, then never let up. I usually didn't fight back, it just made the beatings worse. I was weak and I'd lose and get smacked around. <laughs> Eventually, though, I thought he'd do something about it, and was that club that your high school, right? Mr. Sykes. Yeah. yeah. And after a few sessions, he sent me a train of Leon. Right. Mr. Sykes always did that with anyone show promise, you know? He always said a couple hours once a week at the local gym just isn't sufficient if you got promise. 
You know, Leon's was open near every day, you remember. Boxing's not supposed to be any good for self-defense, though, you know, because <laughs> street fights got no rules. <laughs> school yard slavers weren't street fighters. They just made out like they were. Around school, I didn't say anything about going for boxing. I managed to talk about it and work over a few times until I felt ready. After a few sessions, I was 15. I learned the basics. Found the ring for, for real a few times and done okay. This kid, who looks like that guy there, came at me. We've been teeing on for months. The next time he was up in front of me, I drilled him right off. One right in the button. He went down. It felt good. I mean, emotional good. I hit my knuckles pretty bad and I was popping ten in the back of my wrist. Go figure. Hard shot in the chin. No rap. No gloves. Yeah. I didn't have trouble with kids at school, like at home. Your dad worked me over bad ones, you know. I don't remember, that was pretty early, you know, I was only three. My mother told me later though that my body was black and blue the next day, you know. He used the belt. You'd think I'd remember that. You only didn't try to stop him? No, it'd be my guess. You never did later when he was tearing into his verbally. That was his weekend entertainment. Coming home drunk, bad verbally. Oh, he was very, very good at that, you know. And the old lady, she's just gone. Oh, Tom, stop it. Oh, Tom, that's not nice. Oh, Tom, that's not true. <laughs> no. We were talking earlier about depression and pills. You ever try taking no counts of that sort of thing? Yeah. My first trip. Now that was that was psychoanalytical psychotherapy. But he retired, and then uh, every doctor I saw after that just called it depression and handed out the pills, you know. The psychotherapy though was way too slow going. After a couple of thousand dollars and a few years, all we got established was, you know, I had issues with my father. Like something you didn't know. Yeah. A few years after school. I did a bad, a guy really bad at the bar. My probation officer sent me some ditzy broad, one of those world's smartest psychologist types. You need to stop overreacting to aggressive personalities, Brandon. There are better ways to handle volatile situations than staging preemptive attacks. I told her I hoped her guy would smack her around a bit. She came back to me and how to handle volatile situations. Then I walked out. Probation officer laughed and I told him about it. Nowadays, he'd be fired. And As a matter of practical politics, though, the kids was right. My lawyer's been going to slam twice since then. The last time he said that was it. One more assault and then go inside. Okay, but that's why I got rid of school bullies, and I like taking up pushy guys now. But after the talk with my lawyer, I'm trying to keep it down. I attend a self help group of guys with depression, sort of a punch out synonymous. Hi, I'm Brandon, I'm the deck, melty, aggressive jerks. Yeah. My old man. Highly respected. Like those 10 years I spent in Petrochem, I kept running into the guys who knew, heard of them. Highly respected. But our family liked me a lot. He had that mean mouth, and he, there was always an aura of menace, of potential violence, you know? He had that deal, uh, and I knew he could explode, and that's what kept me in line. Well, that was no problem. I just don't help coping with guys my own age, just like your mother, completely ineffectual. Your old man sounds like he has a bullying gene, like to put others down and bring himself up. Those nightmares you were talking about, are they about anything specific? I don't know, I don't remember, you know. I wake up sweating, my heart pounding. I didn't even know I was having them until Carol told me I was thrashing about half the night. Job on the line. Well, I don't think it's that directly, you know. Like, I'm kind of in a repeat situation, so maybe there's something else getting stirred up, you know, maybe maybe something else trying to break through. My first drink back when I was doing my MBA, <laughs> he said I was one of the most guarded people he'd ever met. He said I was heavily repressing memories, stuff that's too painful to know on a conscious level. Maybe now I'm ready to handle knowing what it was. Maybe. It's the emotions trying to break through. Lord knows. This fight's going nowhere. You want to call the night? I'll see you next Friday. You can come? I arranged my evening. It's just you and Carol, right? <laughs> yeah, just the three of us. Four if you want. Hey. What the? What? What is it, Trevor? 
that fire is coming out of his corners. He's got his left arm. He's got his left arm straight out like that. Yeah, he's just trying to mess up the other fighter's style. Doesn't work against the experienced guy. Well, when the camera was on him face on, I had a flash of my father coming at me that time with his belt in his hand. His left arm out like that, you know, straight up. Why does he have his arm out like that? I'm just a kid. I can't fight back. No, Dad, no. 